Hey, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today I'm working on some Praxis Elementary Education 5003 Mathematics. We're going to do three math problems, and I'm going to walk you through it. They are similar to what you will see on the exam, and they come from our extra practice test that we provide on our website. I'll show you where to get all those resources at the end. Let's get started. All right, so math is arguably the hardest section of the elementary education exam. And people might think, well, it's elementary ed, how hard can it be? Pretty hard. The math on this exam is no joke and it's important to prepare, especially if you are someone who hasn't been thinking about these math skills for a long time, you're trying to become a teacher, you have to review these skills. So let's hop over to my presentation so I can show you what some typical math problems for the 5003 might look like. All right, so you can see here that I have this expression and it says, what is the equivalent of the given mathematical expression? It's just saying, what does this basically equal? And we want to be sure that we are using our PEMDAS. Now I'm gonna go through this slowly. Obviously, if you're really good at math, you're probably gonna fly through this, but I just like to rewrite this when I'm working with people online to make sure it's spread out and I can show you what's going on. So we have negative six plus 25 divided by five times the quantity five minus two. All right, so when we're talking about PEMDAS, P has to do with parentheses, E is exponent. Multiplication and division can be switched out. They can, division can come before multiplication. Multiplication can come before division. It just depends which way it reads in the equation and we read from left to right. And the same thing with addition and subtraction. Now here's the thing. Addition cannot come before multiplication. Subtraction cannot come before division. But multiplication and division can be interchanged depending on which one comes first. And the same thing with adding and subtracting. This is also referred to as order of operations. If you don't follow the order of operations, you will get the incorrect answer. And on most tests for math, they anticipate your errors in order of operations. So be careful. Let's start with the P first, parentheses. Do I have parentheses and a quantity inside? And yes, I do. I have this a five minus two. Now you could cross it out and write three and work through it again. I'm just going to bring everything down just to show you the order of operations. So I'm going to do this part first, because that's number one in PEMDAS. So negative six plus 25 divided by five times, and this is three, right? Five minus two is three. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the parentheses. We're done there. Now, E is for exponents. Do we have any exponents? No, we do not. Okay, then we have multiplication and division. Well, we have multiplication here and division, but which one comes first? The division comes first, and you can see 25 divided by five is five, so I have negative six plus five times three, and now we need to go with multiplication. Don't do this first. Remember, addition cannot come before the multiplication. The division did because it read that way, but addition and subtraction are their own operation and they come after multiplication and division. And so we wanna do this one first. So negative six plus 15 because five times three is 15, right? And negative six plus 15 equals nine, making A the correct answer. Be careful on these. You don't want to rush the orders of, order of operations. They'll usually throw a negative in there. It can be a little bit weird. Slow down on these, making sure you don't make any silly mistakes that'll cost you on test day. All right, let's have a look at the next one here. I always like to work backwards. You know, I'm looking at my answer choices a lot and you can see I have proportions here. I have two fractions equal to one another. These are also called ratios. So I'm looking at a proportional relationship here. It's good to think about that when we are looking at the math, always looking at those answer choices first. So it says Liam purchased a book for $26.77 to find the sales tax in dollars at a rate, and rate is a good word here, of 9% which of the following ratios should be used? Okay, well, what is 9%? Let's go ahead and try to eliminate some answer choices here. When we're talking about percentages, we're talking out of 100, right? So this is actually nine out of 100. So let's eliminate any answer choice that does not have that nine over 100. So we have A and B. Those are out right away because we need that nine over 100 and it looks like C and D. 
are there with it. So now we need to determine if it's 26.77 over X or X over 26.77. Now, what do we do with sales tax? Now, if we are trying to find the sales tax, we are taking the sales tax to the price of the item here, X to 26.77. If we were to write this ratio, it would be X over 26.77. That would give you the proper proportion there. So that means D is our correct answer here. Now, if you weren't sure be between C and D, you could try to cross multiply and solve here and see what kind of answer you got. So in this case, I could go 9X equals, and we multiplied this by 100. So we're going to move the decimal to 9X equals 2677 divide by nine, divide by nine, I still, that's going to be like $300, right? Or close to it because nine into 26 is almost three. It'd be like two and then nine into uh, 77 is going to be like eight ish, right? 208. You don't go from 26 dollars and 77 cents to 208 dollars when you add a nine percent sales tax, right? That would be like, I mean, that's like multiplying it by 10, not nine one hundredths, right? This is a small number. It's 0 0.09. Okay. This would be multiplying it almost by 10. All right. So C would definitely be, be out. And if we were to cross multiply and solve here, we would get 100 X equals, and then nine times just to check our answers, nine times two, 6.77. And you do get a calculator on this exam. You would get 240.93, but we would divide by a hundred, right? And that becomes like $2 and 40 cents, which makes more sense when we're talking about sales tax. So if you get stuck and you don't know where to go, you know, try working it out in the real world and be like, okay, uh, this 208 seems kind of high for sales tax. You're going to pay way more than the items even worth, or is it $2 and 40 cents? Remember when you have a proportion set up equal, you have nine over 100 equals X over 266. That's a proportion. You can cross multiply and solve for X and you can sort of work it out that way and see if your answer is correct. Just a little way to check your, your answers. All right. And finally, let's do one more. This one is geometry and we're talking about surface area. So, and we can see this is a right triangular prism. Okay. Now, surface area is everything on the outside. We're not looking at volume on the inside. We're taking the area of this of this, of this, and of these two triangles here, these two right triangles here. So let's go ahead and just quickly break it all down. Just take it one shape at a time, okay? Let's start with the area of this big triangle here. Base times height, eight times seven, which is 56. This is where your times tables really help you, but you also have a calculator. If you draw a blank, no big deal. Then, so this is eight as well, right? And this is eight and this is eight. So if we know the top here, we know these other sides are eight. And six times eight is 48 and five times eight is 40. That takes care of all the rectangles in there. So let's go ahead and add those up. So I have 56 plus 40 plus 48 and I get 144. Okay, this is why working backwards helps. I'm going to cross off A and I'm going to cross off B as well because I already see this side is six here and that's going to put me over the 148 right away. And here's the thing. If you're like, I don't know how to find the area of a triangle, just guess and go from here and you have a 50-50 chance. You just helped your chances by a lot. So we always want to be continuing to look at our answer choices and cross them out. Now I'm between 170 and 174. Now we need to have a look at this right triangle here. Well, what is the area of a triangle? That is one half times base times height, right? Well, we know the height, the height is six. So it's six times, we don't know the base, but if we were to fold this prism up, this five would go here because it would rest against 
that little bottom part of the triangle. This is called a net. When you undo a prism into its shapes, it's called a net. And when you fold it back up, this five actually hooks to this part here. So it's six times five equals 30. Now you might be tempted to divide by two here because that tells you to multiply it by one half or divide by two, but here's the trick. How many triangles do we have? Two. So we can keep this 30 the way it is because we're gonna do the same thing on this side as well. So we don't have to necessarily divide by two in this situation. If there was only one triangle here and it was six times five and you were looking for the area, that would be six times five equals 30. Divide by two or multiply by one half and that would be 15. But we have two of these triangles here so we do not have to do that. And when we add the 30 to 144, we get 174. All right, so again, not easy especially if you haven't been working with, you know, right triangular prisms in a long time. Let me show you where to get more support if you're looking for help on your 5003 or any of your teacher certification exams. All right, just hop over to KathleenJasper.com. You can see that in our study guides, and that is the big purple book. This is our bestseller. People love it. It's the Praxis 5001, but you can buy them individually also. If you've passed everything and you just need the 5003, the math, you can just buy that. You can also buy the physical copy on Amazon. When you buy from us, it's a digital copy. We also have extra practice tests here that you can use if you decide you want to do more practice tests. But if you want the physical copy, simply click buy on Amazon, and you'll see we have over a thousand five-star reviews and you can buy the full study guide here. I recommend getting it new because if you buy it used, you'll save a couple bucks, but there may be writing. It may all be worked in. I would just buy it new from Amazon Prime. It'll arrive at your door in a couple of days. If you enjoy the digital copy and you want to download it to your computer and get it to you immediately, you can just grab this, add to cart. And you can even add on some of these practice tests here for additional practice. Now, beyond that, we have the online course and that comes with the digital study guide. You can buy the full course here or you can just buy the math if that's what you'd like to do. You can also add on some of these practice tests if you decide you want more practice tests. This is what our online courses look like. You can see that we have the digital study guide for you to download and save to your computer. And then we have videos for all of the skills that you need. I use all the examples in the book and I even go through every single practice test question in the practice test in this book. You can skip ahead. We've broken them up here. So I highly recommend you check out the online course, especially if you're struggling with math. We also have the 5004 and 5005. We have resources for everything. All right. So that's it for today. Be sure you check out all of our products. We really understand the elementary education exam. So definitely check out our free and paid resources for that. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. I wish you luck on your teacher certification exams and have a great day.